Jacques-Yves Cousteau AC was a French naval officer, explorer, conservationist, filmmaker, innovator, scientist, photographer, author and researcher who studied the sea and all forms of life in water. He co-developed the Aqualung, pioneered marine conservation and was a member of the Acada Copyright Mifrona Section S. Cousteau described his underwater world research in series of books, perhaps most successful being his first book, The Silent World, A Story of Undersea Discovery and Adventure, published in 1953. Cousteau also directed films, most notably the documentary adaptation of the book, The Silent World, which won a Palme d'Or at the 1956 Cannes Film Festival. He remained the only person to win a Palme d'Or for a documentary film until Michael Moore won the award in 2004 for Fahrenheit 9-11. Biography Early years, Cousteau was born on June 11, 1910, in St. Andrew Copyright de Cubzac, Gironde, France to Daniel and a Permille Elizabeth Cousteau. He had one brother, Pierre-Antoine. Cousteau completed his preparatory studies at the Collège E. Stanislas in Paris. In 1930, he entered the A. Permille Col Nivelle and graduated as a gunnery officer. After an automobile accident cut short his career in naval aviation, Cousteau indulged his interest in the sea. In Toulon, where he was serving on the Condorcet, Cousteau carried out his first underwater experiments, thanks to his friend Philippe Talies, who in 1936 lent him some Fines underwater goggles, predecessors of modern swimming goggles. Cousteau also belonged to the information service of the French Navy, and was sent on missions to Shanghai and Japan and in the USSR. On July 12, 1937 he married Simone Melchior, with whom he had two sons, Jean-Michel and Philippe. His sons took part in the adventures of the Calypso. In 1991, one year after his wife Simone's death from cancer, he married Francine Triplett. They already had a daughter Diane Cousteau and a son Pierre-Yves Cousteau, born during Cousteau's marriage to his first wife. Early 1940s, innovation of modern underwater diving, the years of World War II were decisive for the history of diving. After the armistice of 1940, the family of Simone and Jacques-Yves Cousteau took refuge in Megave, where he became a friend of the Ishak family who also lived there. Jacques-Yves Cousteau and Marcel Ishak shared the same desire to reveal to the general public unknown and inaccessible Placisa Euro for Cousteau the underwater world and for Ishak the high mountains. The two neighbors took the first ex aequo prize of the Congress of Documentary Film in 1943, for the first French underwater film, Par d'Exute Marches de Fond, made without breathing apparatus the previous year in the Embiers Islands with Philippe Tailliers and Fra Copyright Dow Copyright Rick Duma using a depth pressure proof camera case developed by mechanical engineer La Copyright on Varche. In 1943, they made the film A Permil Paves, in which they used two of the very first Aqualung prototypes. These prototypes were made in Boulogne Billa Nord by the Air Liquide Company, following instructions from Cousteau and a Permil Mile Gagnon. When making A Permil Paves, Cousteau could not find the necessary blank reels of movie film but had to buy hundreds of small still camera film reels the same width, intended for a make of child's camera, and cemented them together to make long reels. Having kept bonds with the English speakers and with French soldiers in North Africa, Jacques-Yves Cousteau was opposite Admiral Darlan's filler reign, helped the French Navy to join again with the Allies. He assembled a commando operation against the Italian espionage services in France, and received several military decorations for his deeds. At that time, he kept his distance from his brother Pierre-Antoine Cousteau, a pen anti-Semite, who wrote the collaborationist newspaper Je Suisse Par Out and who received the death sentence in 1946. However, this was later commuted to a life sentence, and Pierre-Antoine was released in 1954. During the 1940s, Cousteau is credited with improving the aqua lung design which gave birth to the open-circuit scuba technology used today. According to his first book, The Silent World, a story of undersea discovery and adventure, Cousteau started diving with finesse goggles in 1936, and in 1939 used the self-contained underwater breathing apparatus invented in 1926 by Commander Yves Lafriere. 
Cousteau was not satisfied with the length of time he could spend underwater with the Le Freer apparatus so he improved it to extend underwater duration by adding a demand regulator, invented in 1942 by a Permel Mile Gagnon. In 1943 Cousteau tried out the first prototype aqua lung which finally made extended underwater exploration possible. Late 1940s, GERS and a Permel Limonia, in 1946, Cousteau and Thales showed the film a Permel Paves to Admiral Limonia, and the Admiral gave them the responsibility of setting up the Groupe Munter Recherches Sous Marines of the French Navy in Toulon. A little later it became the GERS, then the Camisma, and finally more recently the Savisma. In 1947, Chief Petty Officer Morris Farguse became the first diver to die using an aqualung while attempting a new depth record with the GERS near Toulon. In 1948, between missions of mine clearance, underwater exploration and technological and physiological tests, Cousteau undertook a first campaign in the Mediterranean on board the sloop a Permil Limonia, with Philippe Talias, Fra Copyright Dow Copyright Rick Duma, Jean Alinat and the scenario writer Marcel Ischak. The small team also undertook the exploration of the Roman wreck of Mardia. It was the first underwater archaeology operation using autonomous diving, opening the way for scientific underwater archaeology. Cousteau and Marcel Ischak brought back from there the Carnitz diving film. Cousteau and the A. Permil Limonia then took part in the rescue of Professor Jacques Picard's Bathyscaphy, the FNRS-2, during the 1949 expedition to Dakar. Thanks to this rescue, the French Navy was able to reuse the sphere of the Bathyscaphy to construct the FNRS-3. The adventures of this period are told in the two books The Silent World and Plonga copywriters Sans Car Saint Blair. 1950 Euro 1970s, in 1949, Cousteau left the French Navy. In 1950, he founded the French Oceanographic Campaigns, and leased a ship called Calypso from Thomas Lowell Guinness for a symbolic one franc a year. Cousteau refitted the Calypso as a mobile laboratory for field research and as his principal vessel for diving and filming. He also carried out underwater archaeological excavations in the Mediterranean, in particular at Grand Kranglauer Copyright. With the publication of his first book in 1953, The Silent World, he correctly predicted the existence of the echolocation abilities of porpoises. He reported that his research vessel, the A. Permil Limonia, was heading to the Straits of Gibraltar and noticed a group of porpoises following them. Cousteau changed course a few degrees off the optimal course to the center of the strait, and the porpoises followed for a few minutes, then diverged toward mid-channel again. It was evident that they knew where the optimal course lay, even if the humans did not. Cousteau concluded that the cetaceans had something like sonar, which was a relatively new feature on submarines. Cousteau won the Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival in 1956 for The Silent World co-produced with Louis Moll. With the assistance of Jean Mollard, he made a diving saucer SP-350, an experimental underwater vehicle which could reach a depth of 350 meters. The successful experiment was quickly repeated in 1965 with two vehicles which reached 500 meters. In 1957, he was elected as director of the Oceanographical Museum of Monaco. He directed Pra Copyright Continent, about the experiments of diving and saturation, and was admitted to the United States National Academy of Sciences. He was involved in the creation of Confar Copyright Dow Copyright Ration Mondiale des Activités Copyrightes Subaquatiques and served as its inaugural president from 1959 to 1973. In October 1960, a large amount of radioactive waste was going to be discarded in the Mediterranean Sea by the Commissariat de L.A. Copyright Niji Atomique. The CEA argued that the dumps were experimental in nature, and that French oceanographers such as Vsevelod Romanovsky had recommended it. Romanovsky and other French scientists, including Louis Fage and Jacques Cousteau, repudiated the claim, saying that Romanovsky had in mind a much smaller amount. The CEA claimed that there was little circulation at the dump site between Nice and Corsica, but French public opinion sided with the oceanographers rather than with the CEA atomic energy scientists. The CEA chief, Francis Perrin, decided to postpone the dump. 
Cousteau organized a publicity campaign which in less than two weeks gained wide popular support. The train carrying the waste was stopped by women and children sitting on the railway tracks, and it was sent back to its origin. A meeting with American television companies created the series The Undersea World of Jacques Cousteau, with the character of the commander in the red bonnet inherited from standard diving dress, intended to give the films a personalized adventure style. This documentary television series ran for ten years from 1966 to 1976. A second documentary series, The Cousteau Odyssey, ran from 1977 to 1982, among others. In 1970, he wrote the book The Shark, Splendid Savage of the Sea with Philippe, his son. In this book, Cousteau described the oceanic Atitip shark as the most dangerous of all sharks. In 1973, along with his two sons and Frederick Hyman, he created the Cousteau Society for the Protection of Ocean Life, Frederick Hyman being its first president. It now has more than 300,000 members. In 1975, John Denver released the tribute song Calypso on his album Wind Song, and on the B-side of his hit song I'm Sorry. Calypso became a hit on its own and was later considered the new A-side, reaching number two on the charts. In December 1975, two years after the volcano's last eruption, the Cousteau Society was filming Voyage or Bout du Monde on Deception Island, Antarctica, when Michel Laval, Calypso's second-in-command, was struck and killed by a rotor of the helicopter that was ferrying between Calypso and the island. In 1976, Cousteau uncovered the wreck of HMHS Britannic. He also found the wreck of the French 17th-century ship of the line La Frise in coastal waters of Crete. In 1977, together with Peter Scott, he received the UN International Environment Prize. On June 28, 1979, while the Calypso was on an expedition to Portugal, his second son, Philippe, his preferred and designated successor and with whom he had co-produced all his films since 1969, died in a PBY Catalina flying boat crash in the Tagus River near Lisbon. Cousteau was deeply affected. He called his then eldest son, the architect Jean-Michel Cousteau, to his side. This collaboration lasted 14 years. 1980 Euro 1990s, from 1980 to 1981, he was a regular on the animal reality show Those Amazing Animals, along with Burgess Meredith, Priscilla Presley, and Jim Stafford. In 1980, Cousteau traveled to Canada to make two films on the St. Lawrence River and the Great Lakes, Cries from the Deep and St. Lawrence, Stairway to the Sea. In 1985, he received the Presidential Medal of Freedom from Ronald Reagan. On November 24, 1988, he was elected to the Acada Copyright My Fun Section as Chair 17, succeeding Jean Delay. His official reception under the cupola took place on June 22, 1989, the response to his speech of reception being given by Bertrand Poirot Delpec. After his death, he was replaced by a Permil Rick or Senna on May 28, 1998. In June 1990, the composer Jean-Michel Jarre paid homage to the commander by entitling his new album Waiting for Cousteau. He also composed the music for Cousteau's documentary Palin, The Last Refuge. On December 2, 1990, his wife Simone Cousteau died of cancer. In June 1991, in Paris, Jacques-Yves Cousteau remarried, to Francine Triplett, with whom he had two children, Diane and Pierre-Yves. Francine Cousteau currently continues her husband's work as the head of the Cousteau Foundation and Cousteau Society. From that point, the relations between Jacques-Yves and his elder son worsened. In November 1991, Cousteau gave an interview to the UNESCO Courier, in which he stated that he was in favor of human population control and population decrease. Widely quoted on the Internet are these two paragraphs from the interview, What should we do to eliminate suffering and disease? It's a wonderful idea but perhaps not altogether a beneficial one in the long run. If we try to implement it we may jeopardize the future of our species. It's terrible to have to say this. World population must be stabilized and to do that we must eliminate 350,000 people per day. This is so horrible to contemplate that we shouldn't even say it. 
but the general situation in which we are involved is lamentable. In 1992, he was invited to Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, for the United Nations International Conference on Environment and Development, and then he became a regular consultant for the UN and the World Bank. In 1996, he sued his son who wished to open a holiday center named Cousteau in the Fiji Islands. On January 11, 1996, Calypso was rammed and sunk in Singapore Harbor by a barge. The Calypso was refloated and towed home to France. Death, Jacques-Yves Cousteau died of a heart attack on June 25, 1997 in Paris, aged 87. Despite persistent rumors, encouraged by some Islamic publications and websites, Cousteau did not convert to Islam, and when he died he was buried in a Roman Catholic Christian funeral. He was buried in the family vault at St. Andrew Copyright de Cubzac in France. An homage was paid to him by the city by the inauguration of a Rue du Commandant Cousteau, a street which runs out to his native house, where a commemorative plaque was affixed. Honours, during his lifetime, Jacques-Yves Cousteau received these distinctions, Cross of War 1939 a Euro 1945, National Geographic Society's Special Gold Medal in 1961, Commander of the Legion of Honor, Officer of the Order of Maritime Merit, Grand Cross of the National Order of Merit, U.S. Presidential Medal of Freedom, Induction into the Television Hall of Fame, Commander of the Order of Arts and Letters, Honorary Companion of the Order of Australia, Legacy. Cousteau's legacy includes more than 120 television documentaries, more than 50 books, and an environmental protection foundation with 300,000 members. Cousteau liked to call himself an oceanographic technician. He was, in reality, a sophisticated showman, teacher, and lover of nature. His work permitted many people to explore the resources of the oceans. His work also created a new kind of scientific communication, criticized at the time by some academics. The so-called divulgationism, a simple way of sharing scientific concepts, was soon employed in other disciplines and became one of the most important characteristics of modern television broadcasting. Cousteau died on June 25, 1997. The Cousteau Society and its French counterpart, L.A. Permille Cup Cousteau, both of which Jacques-Yves Cousteau founded, are still active today. The Society is currently attempting to turn the original Calypso into a museum and it is raising funds to build a successor vessel, the Calypso II. In his last years, after marrying again, Cousteau became involved in a legal battle with his son Jean Michel over Jean Michel licensing the Cousteau name for a South Pacific resort, resulting in Jean Michel Cousteau being ordered by the court not to encourage confusion between his for profit business and his father's non profit endeavors. In 2007, the international watch company introduced the IWC Aquitimer Chronograph Cousteau Divers Special Edition. The timepiece incorporated a sliver of wood from the interior of Cousteau's Calypso research vessel. Having developed the diver's watch, IWC offered support to the Cousteau Society. The proceeds from the timepiece's sales were partially donated to the non-profit organization involved into conservation of marine life and preservation of tropical coral reefs. Filmography, Notes S equals short length film F equals full length film other films have length 45 minutes. Equals the film doesn't exist on official filmography. Equals the film's year is greater by one than on official filmography. Bibliography, books by Cousteau, The Silent World, Captain Cousteau's Underwater Treasury, The Living Sea, World Without Sun, The Undersea Discoveries of Jacques-Yves Cousteau. The Ocean World of Jacques Cousteau. A Bill of Rights for Future Generations, Life at the Bottom of the World, the Cousteau United States Almanac of the Environment, Jack Cousteau's Calypso, Marine Life of the Caribbean, Jack Cousteau's Amazon Journey, Jack Cousteau, The Ocean World, The Whale, Jack Cousteau, Whales, The Human, The Orchid and the Octopus, Books about Cousteau, Undersea Explorer, The Story of Captain Cousteau by James Dugan, Jack Cousteau and the Undersea World by Roger King, Jacques-Yves Cousteau, His Story Under the Sea by John Bankston, Jack Cousteau, A Life Under the Sea by Kathleen Olmsted, see also. Scuba Diving, Aqualung, HMHSA Britannic, William Beebe, 
Precontinent, Conchelf II, Albert Falco, Jacques Yves Cousteau's ships, Calypso, SP 350 Denise, El Chion, Calypso II, References. External links, The Cousteau Society, Jack Cousteau at the Internet Movie Database, Jack Cousteau at Find a Grave, Jack Cousteau Centennial, The Sea is Everything.